my job is to make sure that there's a selling strategy for your programs, for your, for your courses. Um, and, and that, you know, my team is going to design, execute and manage that each step along the way of building out that selling system or that selling machine. I've been doing this for a long, long time. I, I kind of grew up in the agency world. I worked for a bunch of very large agencies, Ogilvy and Mather, Young and Rubicam. Um, I created some of my own agencies um, and now I'm, I'm hooked up and working and collaborating with the likes of, of Robert and the folks at Course Creek. Um, and I, I do have like a product management, sales management, marketing management background. Um, but at the end of the day, my job in this is to drive traffic and leads to all of the techniques that Robert has, has described to you um, recently. Um, so that's, that's what my job is. And I'm going to talk to you about the tactics that we're going to use to do that. Um, what I want you to know going into this presentation is that we do have a process. So we, we don't just start spending money without really doing a lot of thinking ahead of time, getting to know you, your market, your course, um, you know, understanding your competitors is a critical part of the research and the planning that we do so that we can understand, you know, what you're up against and what's working in the market, what's not working. Out of that, we're going to start to help you, um, you know, determining what those objectives are, figuring out what the right budget needs to be for you to achieve those objectives. Out of that, then we'll, we'll pick the right tactics that work. Um, it's, not, it's not about throwing money at everything. It's throwing money at things that we know are going to work, building out the campaigns, and then ongoing optimization, management, reporting, testing, 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 you know, testing everything, seeing what's working, doing more of what's working, and less um, of what's not working. So we're going to talk about three uh, tactics that we that we focus on when it comes to building out these selling machines or selling systems for courses, social media, paid online advertising and SEO. Uh, let's start with social media. Uh, let's simplify things too. what I want you to take away from this uh, section is that social media is all about creating content and then placing content on the right social channel. Remember that not all social channels are built the same. Uh, each, each channel, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, etc., they all cater to a specific audience with a specific set of interests uh, and intent. And so what really is important is that when you are creating content, you need to know where that content is eventually going to live and how it's going to be used. Um, I don't want to drown you with statistics, but the point in this slide and the next slide is, is to just bring to your attention the scale, uh, the size of the audience that these platforms generate and capture every single day. They're enormous. And so uh, suffice to say, um, social media is a very, very safe bet when it comes to trying to attract an audience and then convert that audience into a customer. You know, the benefits of social uh, are, are very, there's, there's a whole bunch of them, but, but we've kind of triggered it down to four that really matter when it comes to selling things like courses. One is, is just to increase the awareness um, uh, about your product, your, your course, your brand, your company. With, with so many people using social media, it's not that hard to find the right audience uh, through the right channel. And then again, creating engagement, um, generating a lot of comments, likes, shares of your content. That's how you're going to create awareness for your brand, for your product. And that's how you're going to start to generate more of those traffic, more of that traffic and lots more of those leads. Um, you know, you can generate traffic leads, boost those conversions. Robert mentioned some of the tactics earlier, doing live videos and webinars, contests, um, selling product through some of the specific shop sections, depending on the type of product you're using. Instagram and Facebook have very strong uh, tools to help with, uh, with the sales and marketing of various products and services and courses, of course. And it's a great way to, to generate and foster relationships with an audience because the nice thing about social media is it tends to be what's referred to as as a repeatable media, it's something that's in people's lives um, regularly. Folks check in uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter uh, on a regular basis, and so so you can leverage that frequency and that and and that regular visiting to a social channel to your advantage. It's also a tremendous way to learn about what's going on with your competitors and in the market that you serve specifically. Um, the, the beauty of, of these social channels is it's, it's kind of like very transparent in terms of what people are trying to do and, and what, they're, uh, what the levers, if you will, 
they're pulling when it comes to selecting the channel that they're going to be on and the content that they're using. Um, you can check in how they're promoting it, what, what are the campaigns looking like, how, how many followers they have. There's just a ton of information you can capture just by sort of cruising or trolling, if you will, um, some of your competitors' courses and see what they're doing. Social strategy, again, we do have a process. It, it really starts with understanding those buyer personas. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. Those personas will help you determine which social plan, which social channels or markets that you want to use, what kind of content you're going to create and how you're going to go about creating it, then organizing and scheduling the posts. It's, it's all about consistency. Um, if you're going to be effective with social media, you got to be there and you got to be there often. Uh, and then, of course, analyzing uh, the results and the impact that it's having, testing, testing, more testing. And then again, I can't stress enough, um, you know, doing more of what's working and less of what's not working. That's what testing is all about. The personas um, are critical. Um, the, it helps us determine um, how we're going to attract people based on who they are, how we're going to target the right groups and how we're going to make sure that we're using the right channels. Um, these personas need to be very, very granular. We tend to create, um, there, there's no limit to the, to, to the right number of personas that you would create uh, in terms of defining a target or a market uh, for your course. Um, I've, I've got campaigns where I've got two or three, you know, personas and that covers it. And I've got other campaigns where I might have 15 or 20 different personas. It just depends on the market you're going after and the product that you're trying to sell. But creating these personas is part of our process that we work on with, with you. And it's, it's a critical part of that process to just really dive deep and get very granular on who these target, these target customers look like. Um, and then from there, as I said, it's, it's about matching the needs of that audience, where they spend their time on social media, and then making sure that we're leveraging the right channels, because there are quite a number of them to choose from. You want to make sure that you're, you're hitting the right channels with the right personas. And then the content itself. Typically, social media content um, is, is not to be mistaken for something like blogging, social media content tends to be quick and easy to consume. It tends to include, you know, an image or a small video, a couple of lines of copy and a link out to a bigger piece of, of content. The key is to make it, uh, give that, that viewer a reason to click the follow button, to click the like button, to click the share button. Um, and it's all about consistency and ease, easy to consume content. And then the consistency is all about the scheduling and organization of how you're going to go to market with your content. You know, regular social posting is a tremendous indicator to the search engines that you're an authority. Search engines take note of how often um, content is being created out of a Facebook page or a Twitter um, environment or any of the other social channels. Uh, and it assigns a certain authority score. Uh, to the brand or to the product. And so the, the more often you're posting good content, um, the search engines take note of that and it'll reward you with, with rankings and other relevant things that matter when it comes to driving traffic and leads. Uh, as a rule of thumb too, it is important that you should only post social when you have some good quality content. Um, and it's very difficult to create content on a regular basis. Uh, it's an ex Content can be expensive, uh, time consuming, complex, our, our suggestion is that you, you create um, like 10 or 12 weeks of content at a time so that the posting and the publishing of it becomes very simple and very easy and you never run out of good quality content. Um, and then, of course, it's all about making sure that we are focusing on the metrics that matter, um, data about, you know, the level of engagement that, that your customers or your prospects, your target audience is having with your content, how many likes have you gathered, follows, shares, all of the other uh, interactions on each different platform. There's a number of metrics that matter. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. You you may be familiar with some of them. Again, you'll you'll be receiving this this content in these slide decks, so you can go back and review any of this stuff. But these are the typical metrics that really matter that will give you an indication if your content is resonating with the audience that you're trying to attract. Um, and if your social media efforts are working, are you driving traffic through um, the, the right level of engagement? Are you reaching the right number of people? Are your followers then resharing 
um, you know, leveraging the content, enjoying it enough to share with their people, et cetera, et cetera. Are you generating the right number of impressions that you hopefully through, through the funnel activity is going to convert or is going to kind of funnel quote, excuse the pun funnel down to a conversion and an actual sale, et cetera, et cetera. There, so there's a lot of metrics. It's very important to focus on the metrics that matter so that you can move quickly so that you can, again, focus more on what's working and less on what's not working. I'm going to move on now to the second tactics, which is paid online advertising. Um, you may refer to this. There's a number of different you know, monikers, different nomenclature out there, uh, AdWords, retargeting, display, it all kind of falls under this umbrella called search engine marketing. And really search engine marketing is, is all about using paid advertising to ensure that your products and services are visible in the search engine results pages. I'm going to take you through an anatomy of a search engine result page in a few minutes, just so that we have a better understanding of how it all ends up in front of, of someone who's searching for something that has to do uh, with what you're selling or what your course is all about. At the end of the day, um, it's all about an auction and, and the auctions come down to um, identifying keywords uh, that we want to bid on that will drive traffic and leads. And again, um, keywords are really uh, the words that best describe the content on your page or on your social post. Uh, and it's, it's really the search term that you want to rank for within certain pages. And so what you have here on the right side of the screen is just an example of some keyword research where we, we were looking at, well, how much volume is out there when it comes to leadership training in the United States? Meaning on a monthly basis, the keyword phrase leadership training generates around 4,500 searches across the, across the internet in the US. Leadership courses generating 1,400 searches, et cetera. So this is what we, what the types of tools that we use to see what kind of volume is out there for keywords when we're just determining uh, how we want to attract customers, potential customers. From there, we determine the budget and how much we're willing to spend on a click. Um, and then um, your, your, your keywords, if there's a good fit and what the costs are all determined through um, what you're willing to spend on a word and your, your quality score. Your quality score is something that Google attaches to you as a brand when it comes to helping determine a number of things. The most important is what you're going to pay for a click. If you have very good quality scores, you're going to pay less for a click versus a competitor who's bidding on the same word who maybe doesn't have as good or as strong a quality score as you do. It's very, very important to keep in mind quality scores in the overall look of what your online presence for your business is for the brand or the product or the course that you're selling. There are a number of things that, that go into determining quality score, um, not the least of which is, you know, the, the, the quality of your website, the quality, do you have a reviews and reputation program for your business? Are you managing your business listings across the internet? Um, are you doing some good solid SEO? Google takes note of everything you do on the internet and everything that's associated with your business or your product. And it all goes into determining your quality score. So those, those are things to keep in mind when you go to market, um, understanding what the keywords cost and how you can drive those costs down by making sure your online presence is in tip top shape, um, which, which of course impacts your quality scores. Um, the strategy comes down Primarily, it's all about optimization. And again, I keep saying testing, testing, testing more of what's working, less of what's not working. Um, and and in, the, in regards to that, there's a couple of factors that go into determining that, that paid search SEM strategy. There's keyword intent, keyword volume and competition, the cost of the keywords, how your accounts are structured uh, for campaign point of view. And the actual copy, at the end of the day, it comes down to well-written copy, well-presented copy. I'm going to take you through each of these very, very quickly. On keyword intent, again, um, the way to figure this out is start by brainstorming brand terms that are relevant to your course or your business, terms that describe what the course is all about. And don't forget to include in your list 
terms that are relevant to your competitors. Because in an auction situation, remember, you're competing for those keywords with your competitors. So you probably want to bid in some cases on keywords that are specific to them, specifically the name of their course, the name of their product, because if they do rank well against their name or the course name um, and you bought that term, then you can capture the search volume that's coming out of those keywords. So it starts with that brainstorming exercise, coming up with a whole list of keywords, understanding what the keywords are, um, and then doing some research against those keywords to see if there's actually enough volume to, to develop a strategy around them. And if there's not, then you just keep looking for keywords that are relevant to your course, to your product, to your business, uh, and make sure there's enough volume in there to build, to build a strategy around. Um, volume and competition. Uh, it's, it's important that when you are doing the, the research that the understand the relevant high volume and low competition keywords are really the sweet spot. And so that keyword research that I referenced and some of the tools that we use that will help you arrive at finding those high volume keywords where there's not a lot of people competing for them. That's where you then build your strategy around those words because that's where you should be getting most of the ROI. No keywords are, are built the same or no words uh, perform the same on the internet. Uh, it's interesting to note that things like you know, lawyers, uh, those are very expensive keywords because there's a lot of people looking for them and not a lot of volume. It's all about supply and demand. Remember, it's an auction at the end of the day. So, so again, that high volume, low competition is the strategy that we would employ to make sure that we're getting as much return as we can. That, that then comes down to the cost per, per keyword. The high bids and the high quality ads, ads are, are what win the placement in those search engine results. Um, and again, doing the proper research, really drilling down on the right relevant keywords are gonna help you uh, achieve those placement objectives and, and making sure that you're, you're bidding appropriately. You never win bidding too low and you lose money bidding too high. So making sure that all of the levers are working together will get you to the right cost per keyword and, and the best return on those keywords. Um, and then how your campaign is actually structured. There's, there's those four elements that go into the campaign structure. The ad copy itself that's displayed against those keywords that you've chosen, the, the keywords themselves, the ad groups that each keyword belongs to, and then the, 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 the campaign itself and how much you've decided to spend. So if we look at this graph or this chart on the right, um, you know, we have a customer who's determined that they're going to spend $500 a day. They're going to spend 300 against uh, keywords that relate to shoes and 200 that against keywords that relate to shirts. And then with, so they're going to create those ad groups, two for shoes and one for shirts. And then they've determined these keywords that would belong to each ad group. And then they've gone and written copy against those keywords. So it all ladders up to how your campaign is structured. The, the, the better it's structured, um, it, you're gonna get you're gonna get far better results by paying less uh, for keywords. And then when it comes to the actual copy itself, um, there are certain elements um, that go into the ad when you see an ad in the search engine results. There's the title, uh, in this case, title of your course, where the URL would be found that would lead people to information or, or transaction or, or anything to do with the course. And then the two descriptors that Google offers uh, for you to describe um, the ad and the copy itself. And, and, and at the end of the day, um, what people are looking for and where they can find it. Remember, this is, uh, you know, paid search. I can't stress this is enough. It's, it's not a set it and forget it game. It requires constant attention, constant optimization. Uh, there is a lot of technology software tools that we use to optimize things, but it's also professionals who are in there every day working the campaigns, tweaking copy, tweaking keywords, making sure that everything's optimized as much as, as possible. And that brings us to SEO, which is very much a related term when it comes to keywords and things of that nature. But, uh, you know, paid search is where you're paying for words. Uh, SEO is more of an organic play where you are um, using 
keywords to make great content findable. If you just remember this one phrase about SEO, if anyone ever asks you, what is SEO at a cocktail party? Uh, SEO is all about making great content findable. And, and, and there's a number of ways and a number of factors that go into that findability. First of all, I promised you this anatomy of, of a search engine result. We've all seen search engine results because we've all searched at the top of the page is the search bar. The next section right below it is, is the AdWords campaigns themselves. These are ads that folks have paid for. Below that is, is then focused on local search where Google serves up a map uh, with links to what's called the local pack. Which, which this is more uh, relevant to, you know, location-based business, brick and mortar businesses where people might be looking for directions or might be looking for a phone number, might be looking for information about a, a shop or a store. Um, but then the organic results where we want to play uh, come right below the local pack. And organic results carry a lot more credibility than paid results do. There's a ton of research that says that, you know, paid search results are important to consumers, but organic results more so because they feel that they carry more credibility. It's not something that a brand is paid for. It's basically something that a brand has earned. Um, and, and that's why, and I'll share this with you in, in a few slides, where, where Google assigns where you're going to sit in the rankings based on how well you're performing your online presence, your authority around the content, the subject matter, et cetera. Below the organic results, Google stuffs in a few more paid searches, uh, paid AdWord campaigns. And then below that, um, as a service to searchers, they also provide related searches so that you can see as a searcher what other people were searching for for that might be related to those keywords that you used um, in your search. Uh, this is all about rankings and visibility. Just remember rankings and visibility are what drive traffic and leads um, when, it comes to, when it comes to SEO. Um, rankings is essentially where your web appears in those search, where your web page appears in those search engine results that I just shared with you. And then visibility is how prominent your domain is across all search engine results. So how often do you appear if you have, you know, a hundred people searching for the same keywords? Uh, what kind of visibility do you have across those hundred people? That's how, that, that's one of the things along with visibility that Google uses um, to help determine where you're going to sit. Um, how Google then knows how to rank a page is really two factors, the relevancy and the authority. And so relevancy is, is basically, um, is your content relevant to the keywords that you've chosen to bid on or the key, sorry, in this case, SEO, the keywords that would be used by the searcher in their query. And then the authority is measured by a website's popularity on the internet. Again, how often are you appearing for these searches? This is an example of a customer, um, a Waypath Consulting. Uh, this is uh, some blog management that we do for them. And this is an example of where their keywords were all around anything to do with customer service, customer engagement, customer experience. You can see um, a good writer who is, is skilled in the ways of SEO. Um, it's one thing to be a good writer, but to, to write for SEO, you have to understand how to write uh, and what matters to the search engines and where you're gonna use the keywords in crafting the message that appears on a blog or any piece of content. Uh, and so I just highlighted where some of the keywords uh, sort of sit and how, and how they work and what really goes into um, helping you achieve whatever those objectives are for SEO and how you're building out your strategy. Um, the strategy really, um, we could spend days talking about SEO. I'm really just touching the top line here for you, but there's three things that you really need to remember in addition to what SEO is, again, making good content findable. The way you make it findable is you have the right technical setup so that the content can be found during indexing. Indexing in its simplest terms is, is the process that Google goes through um, about 15 or 16 times a day. Google indexes the entire internet, literally trillions of pages of content that Google, Google is scraping and indexing and storing 
so that it can serve up information to people when they're looking for it. And the right technical setup means that you have all of the content and all of the elements of all of the pages on your website and your landing pages are set up technically properly. You've heard things like meta tags and alt tags. These are all indicators to Google to make the content findable. So Google basically publishes a set of best practices uh, when it comes to SEO and, you know, um, content creators and website owners and landing page owners are encouraged to follow this best practices by, by really understanding how to make your content findable in that indexing, in that indexing phase. And so it takes the right setup technically to be found while thing, while Google is indexing the internet. Of course, good content um, is what customers want when they're searching. And as we discussed, good content drives ranking and visibility. And again, good content is content that is created around the theory of best practices when it comes to SEO. And then links, um, you've heard of linking and backlinking. Think of that in terms of the company you keep and how you're judged on the company that you keep. How do you associate yourself with other authorities, other authoritative sites or pages? So if you, for instance, have a course about leadership um, and you have your landing pages and your website and your course pages linked to other leadership, like other places on the internet that might be associated with some kind of authoritative um, subject matter around leadership, that's a good thing. That, that again, is something that Google looks at and it ranks you and it judges you again by the, basically the company you keep is the simplest way to, uh, to describe that. And then, you know, how do we measure success and what are we tracking when it comes to SEO? Well, again, testing, 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 do more of what's working, less of what's not working. And we want to make sure that our traffic coming from that organic channel is constantly growing. If we are practicing good SEO best practices and we're consistently delivering and publishing good content, we should see organic growth. Um, are the keywords ranking? Have we started with certain keywords maybe ranking in the fourth, fifth position? And now over time, we're working them hard and they're starting to rank in the second, third, and first position. Um, are we getting conversions from the organic traffic? Are, are people are people coming down the funnel with us and, and actually buying based on the keywords that, that we're using to drive performance on the content? Then we get very granular into things like how much time once people have entered you know, queries against keywords and they've arrived at the page, how much time are they spending on the page? Is the content engaging enough that we're gonna keep them there long enough for, the cons for them to consume that buying message? Or are they bouncing off the page? That's what we refer to as bounce rate is, you know, how many are coming and only spending a little bit of time and then going somewhere else? Um, are the top landing pages attracting the right amount of organic traffic when we're delivering, designing a page strat, a landing page strategy? We want to make sure that again, it's it's a funnel approach where we're 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 starting at point A and we want them to get to point C and we want to make them you know guide them through the process of consuming the content so that they end up at a buying message or a call to action. Um, are our pages being indexed? Comes back to that technical that technical thing that I sp spoke to you earlier, if your pages are not set up technically, if the technical side of your pages are not in sync with where they need to be, they won't be indexed. And if they're not indexed, that's that's priority number one, getting your pages indexed. Because if they're not indexed, they just won't appear in any search results. And then links, are we, are we constantly trying to, you know, again, grow that network, grow that association with, with other people and other sites and other subject matter experts um, that would reflect well on us. So that's those are some of the, again, metrics that matter, things that we want to be keeping an eye on when we're seeing if, if SEO is giving us the return that we need. I'm sorry if I made you uh, drink from a fire hose, a lot of content here. The message I want to leave you with, though, is that we do we do employ all of these tactics um, and we do it with one thing in mind, which is to drive traffic and leads to all of the, um, the selling mechanisms that we put in place for you to generate revenue and sell courses. Thanks, folks. Thanks so much for that, Mike. Uh, I know um, 
I've got a question that I want to ask, but we have, we do have uh, questions coming in and, and folks, if you got questions about anything related to, you know, really generating demand, uh, getting, getting people to uh, your, your course to be a potential purchaser, now's the time to, to get them in so that we're able to address them before we wrap up. But uh, the question in here from, from Mark, uh, Mike, as he says, he's trying to figure out how to make um, or how much time and money he needs to dedicate to really make this work and become at least half of his annual revenue, his personal income within a year or two. So I, I'm taking his ambition is to you know create sell courses. He wants that to to you know become at least half of his his personal income, and he knows the answer is it depends. Um, uh, but you know, can creating an online course business be done as a side business, or do you really make need to make this your main or sole focus in order to create? A profitable business, and I know I have some thoughts on that. But Mike, I'm going to ask you what uh, what your thoughts are. What a great question, um, and and a really tough one to answer because it it does depend. It depends on a lot. You know, it's, it depends on something as basic as is there actually a market for your course, which determines how hard is it going to be to generate opportunity, uh, which then translates to revenue. Um, so it, much like keyword research, it's all about doing your research up front to see if there's a market for the product, um, how big is the market, and then starting to determine how much time and resources, resources typically meaning money, do you have to invest in going out and capturing your share of that market? I, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to be ambiguous because it is a very difficult question to give a specific answer to. Robert, I don't know, you, you might have a bit more experience with entrepreneurs like this who want to get into this than I do. Well, well, I do. And I have um, everyday experience as, as a course creator myself. Um, the couple things. One, um, you can do it as a side business. Um, you may not have enough time in the day to take it as far as you would dream it to go, but it is possible with a good topic and a good idea to have it as a side show. Um, I have courses that are sort of a, a full, uh, uh, you know, a full commitment. And I also have additional courses that are sort of augmenting the bigger course that are a bit of a sideshow that do quite well because they have the right topic, the right copy. And which leads me to the next part of my answer, which is the things that Mike and I are talking about today. If you implement good funnels, good marketing, great copy, it makes a huge amount of difference. I'm thinking of a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine who's in a similar business, uh, not Course Creek, but something else that I'm involved in. And, and she is knocking it out of the park, 30, 40 grand a month. And my similar business is doing great. But the reason she's knocking it out of the park and I'm doing just only good at the moment is because she's putting time and energy into webinars, close enrollment campaigns, consistent uh, uh, content on YouTube with a smart YouTube strategy and somebody that curates her content for her. She's got a workflow that's all dialed in. So I've seen it firsthand. You can have the most beautiful setup and, and a great idea and, and do good. But if you put the effort behind it, the stuff that Mike and I are talking about today and good copy, you, boy, I'm surprised at what can happen actually. It, it can really be a life-changing situation, really can be. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think the only thing I'd add to that, uh, I would just reiterate what Mike said initially about being as sure as you can about your market and what's going to work in, in that market, because that, that really is your starting point. You know what you're going to be able to sell, what price point you're going to be able to sell it at, how many people you're going to be able to sell it to. You know, you, you've got to start from that. Those factors being absolutely as strong as they can. And then the the point I would add to this is what you're looking for. I mean, whether you're doing this part time or full time, but it's it's particularly important if you're doing it um, part time. Is um, Figure out what gives you the most leverage. Like, and, and this is really tactically um, where you're going to get leverage. Like, I figured out pretty early on with Learning Revolution, just as sort of a, an overall effort, that SEO was where it at, was where it was at. Um, and it, it took me a while to fully wake up to it, but once I did, 
I mean, I put everything in, in SEO uh, at, at this point because I know that that's my leverage point for what I'm trying to do with that particular website. But I have another line of our, our business where it's really not about SEO because it's just a it's a sort of nuanced and quirky enough business that most people don't even know to go to a search engine and search on, on what we offer. And I've found that, that, um, that webinars and, and slowly building up a community and building up an audience through webinars has just been a much better tactic there. So and you got to get out there and start trying some things once you've got the market identified and start getting a sense of what's getting you some leverage when you're out there. And, and as soon as you find those leverage points, double down on those. And, you know, at that point, you can hire contractors. You know, if you need to, to do, you know, blog posts uh, for STOs, you can hire blog writers. If you need, you know, good copywriting or great design for decks, for webinars, or whatever it is, you can hire those people. And once you know that those are points of leverage and that if you invest in those things, you are going to get a return off of them, then you can justify, you know, spending some money because you know the return is going to be there. And that, that's where you want to get is where do I know it's justifiable to spend some money because I know that it's going to pay me back in, in doing that. Um, can, I, can I just add something to that, Jeff? Sure, by all means. Quickly, your comment around content. Remember one thing, like clicks come and go, but content lives forever. Yeah. So when you publish content to a blog, you publish content to your social channels. Um, if you're practicing good SEO, uh, then you're constantly going back and tweaking that content and optimizing that content over and over and over again. I have customers who have blog content that I've created for them that's lived on their blog for years, the same piece of content, but optimized constantly. Uh, whereas a click comes and goes, you spend money on the auction, you click on a keyword and the benefit goes the minute that keyword is clicked on. So just remember that to Jeff's point, SEO can give you tremendous return on your investment. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm also going to answer that one question. I just saw Jeff. I hope you don't mind. I'm not mowing your lawn and being the moderator <laughs> um, <laughs> about, do we outsource some or any of our copy? A few quick things to remember about content and copy. Um, there's original content, which is very expensive, um, but also very effective. And there's curated content, which is less e expensive and probably just as effective if it's strategized properly. And so the right mix of original content and curated content is the answer. And it takes time to get to that answer. So you got to try a bunch of stuff. Uh, you got to go out and write or hire someone to write some long form content for you. And you've got to supplement it with curated content that you found from all over the internet that you're linking back to so that you have a robust content strategy. Content is all about quality, quantity, and frequency. You want good content, you want a lot of it, and you want it turning over regularly. And it's impossible to, to, to run a business purely on a, original content because it's just too damn expensive. Mm -hmm. But if you mix it up with curated and original content, that's where you arrive at the right, the right recipe, if you will. Yeah. Thanks for, for mentioning curation, Mike. Uh, that's, that's been a huge part of um, uh, really everything that, that we've done here. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, because anybody who's producing a course, is an expert in whatever they're doing, you know. So with that expertise, you're able to go out and really identify the best of the best out in the world that you serve, and that that's a tremendous service because people need that, you know, to help make sense of what's out there. You're also obviously able, to, probably, to write or at least to get somebody to help you write, you know, produce that that long form content that Mike's uh, talking about. Um, uh, so you need to do some of that to, as well. I, I still think blogging is, is so important. Um, it, it tends to get dismissed, uh, I find a, a lot of times these days, but you know, like you're saying, Mike, I mean, you know, consistently producing that content every time, going back and refreshing it. Um, yeah, I mean, you're really building, you're building this environment around actually being able to make the course sale. I mean, you can't just, you know, stick a course out there and expect something to happen, you know, unless you're already famous, you know, but if, if you're not already famous, then you've got to build up an audience. You've got to build up a presence. You've got to build up a brand. You've got to bring people to you. And that that takes time. I, I the question I have related to this, Mike, that I want to ask you about is, I mean, what's your opinion, particularly if you're coming out of the gate? I mean, you need you need the organic traffic eventually, um, but if you don't have it and you're trying to get started, you're probably going to have to spend some money. I mean, how would you think about balancing, you know, your investment initially in trying to create some organic content that's going to get SEO over time uh, versus spending some money on different types of uh, of advertising that uh, yeah. that might bring people to you. That that's a great question. You know, remember SEO is a bit of a longer term play 
and then paid media, paid advertising is, is, is certainly get your results quicker, but at, at, a, at a much greater cost, hence a lower return on your investment. So it, again, it's the balance. It's the same thing. Over time, you'll figure out what the right recipe is. Out of the gate, there's nobody in the planet who can tell you here's exactly the right thing to do to get your results overnight. The internet is not an overnight thing. It, it takes a bit of time for content to marinate, for en search engines to take note of it, to go through all those ranking factors. You can bypass some of that time by paying for advertising, by click, by bidding high on important keywords and capturing as much of that traffic. And maybe that if you have the resources, it's a very quick way and a good way to get off the ground, if you will. But over time, SEO is a longer play with a much greater return on your investment. And I'm not an SEO agency. I have no, I don't have no dog in this race or horse in this race. Um, it's just, that's the way the internet works. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I do always tell people, I mean, you're, when, when you're creating that content over time, you're, you're building an asset and doing yeah. that, that, that. That is an asset for your business. Robert, sorry. Yeah, I'd like to add um, from firsthand experience, uh, the, the agreed, you want to do both. But so I, I'm going to make a, make a, I'm going to be an advocate for curated content in this, in this uh, point, because as somebody who went out and created a lot of organic content, and still do, um, it can be really tiring. It can really beat you up and uh, because it's so demanding and so consistent, uh, or the requirement, uh, coughing up your own content all the time. There's people that do it, God bless them. But um, at some point you can just really get too tired and throw in the towel because you're just tired of coughing up content. So I'm an advocate for finding a solution to get have get some help to get some content that's curated for you as well otherwise you won't make it and i for some for, for a lot of requirements good yep. point definitely. very good point definitely all right well we're at the top of the hour here uh if anybody has a, a last minute question they want to get in um we're certainly uh, happy to do that but um but don't see any, I'm going to bring us to a, a close. Uh, thank you, Jose, for, for being Thank you, Jose. Yeah. Um, I hit, see something in the Q&A panel here. Let's see. Uh, uh, Roland says, uh, great information. Thanks. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Great. Awesome. Well, good. Well, we're at the end of our three days here. Um, hopefully, you know, if you've been here for the whole thing, great. Uh, you know, hopefully we've taken you through the, the, the a journey that makes sense for you in terms of the steps that you need to go through and getting your plan together and getting that course created, getting it set up and, and you know, uh, configured in a way that people are going to be able to, to come to it and turn into your customers. And then, you know, as Mike and, and Robert have covered today, what it actually takes to get in front of them, get their attention, get them uh, to you using the tools that are available to you. Um, this has all been recorded. So we will put the uh, the recordings out there. It's probably going to be sometime at least Friday before uh, we're able to do that. Um, but I'll make sure you get access to the videos and to the, uh, the PowerPoint decks to go with them. So you'll have this as an ongoing resource. And of course, you know, you should uh, feel free to to reach out to any of us. If you happen to be um, interested in engaging with uh, Course Creek uh, to help with any of this, I've put uh, our, our link to Course Creek in the in the chat there, um, learningrevolution.net uh, slash Course Creek. Uh, if you go to that, you can fill out a form to get a, a free consultation with Robert. Um, you know, absolutely no obligation in doing that. I guarantee you'll get a lot out of the consultation, even if you decide not to, that you don't want to work with Course Creek. Uh, but obviously, these are guys who, who do this day in and day out every day. Uh, Robert, we, I should have gotten you to say more along the way, um, Robert, but I mean, Robert is a very successful course creator himself. You know, he, as he has uh, said all along, he, he created this out of the experiences that he's had and, and wanting to help other people. So, you know, he's not just some guy who said, oh, it would be a great idea to, to create some courses um, and, and see if I can charge some money for it. No, he's he's actually gone out there and done it and and, uh, and, and been successful at it. So he's got that experience. So I encourage you to check out Course Creek. Uh, I encourage you to contact any of us with um, questions you have. I'm gonna put my uh, email address in the chat here. You can feel free to contact me directly at jcobb at learningrevolution.net uh, if you would like to. And otherwise, 
Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Mike. Thank you to Thanks, everyone. Thank you to everybody who's come and been part of this initial uh, from platform to profits micro summit. And we look forward to doing this again at, uh, at some point in the future. Take care, everyone.